This is Jarvis Leatherby from the band Sirith Ungle and Night Demon. You're listening to Sonic Perspectives. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another interview of Sonic Perspectives. I'm Rodrigo Altaf, and today I'll be talking to Jarvis Leatherby, the bass player of metal pioneer Sirith Ungo. Jarvis, how are you, man? I'm doing great. You have a new album out called Forever Black, hitting the stores and digital platforms on April 24th. Give us an overview of the album, if you can. Yeah, it's eight new songs from the band Sirith Ungo. The first song, first original song, uh, well, actually, this is the first original album since 1991. <laughs> so 29 years 29 years but uh um yeah eight new songs on there um it's pretty dark it's pretty doomy but there's some other good tracks on it it has a very post-apocalyptic theme which is kind of fits into what's happening in society today it was not planned that way obviously but i guess perfect timing for that it's very very surreal Oh, yeah, I listened to it, and it rocks. Like you said, it's the first collection of new material in about 29 years, and it, it does do the old material justice. Uh, was there any kind of worry with you guys, uh, with how you guys would sound with so many years between releases yeah, or not? Yeah, for uh. sure. Yeah, for sure, because, you know, so I also, I'm also the manager of the band, okay? Oh, okay. So I'm the guy who reunited them after 25 years. Oh, so wow. Uh. I'm, I'm the last stop. <laughs> when it comes to anything that the band does, right? So I'm more like the creative control editor. So I tried to put it off for years, them doing a record. I didn't want them to do it because, you know, when old, when old guys get back together after 30 years, it's never good, dude. You yeah. know, like yeah. it's, that's, it's, it's really hard to recreate that magic, you know? So, uh, but they were insistent on doing it and they, they ended up writing some really good songs. So I was, I was surprised and, you know, like, It, it ended up being really good. Oh, yeah. Uh, was there any idea from back in the day that Tim or Robert kept, or are these all brand new compositions? Okay, so there's two songs. We recorded 10 songs. Mm. There's two songs that Greg and Rob wrote, I think, when they were, like, in junior high. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and, and those songs will come out on a later release. We're going to do more stuff, man. Oh, okay. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Awesome. That yeah. sounds awesome. But all the eight songs you hear on Forever Black are just totally, those are brand new. New, okay. I must say, I, I love the mix on the album, and uh, it allows every instrument to shine. But if someone told me that this was a, a lost album from Siri Thungo from 83, I would believe it. Really? Yeah. You think the Sonic sound that good, huh? It yeah, sounds like that, huh? It sounds vintage, good. you know. Uh, the mix good. is clear. We tried to course. do that. We yeah. Tried. Yeah, we tried to do that, yeah. Yeah. So that hold, it holds up amazingly against the old material. So props to you guys for that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, the artwork uh, is amazing. In true Sir Dungle tradition, it features a painting by Michael Whelan. At this yes. point, I think his illustrations are an integral part of the band, right? Without Michael Whelan, you and I are not having this conversation. <laughs> You're probably right, yeah. That's the truth. It, yeah. that's, it, in heavy metal in general, every great heavy metal band, it's like half artwork, half imagery, you know, and it's half artwork and imagery and half music, you know? Like, you gotta have... Without Eddie, we're not talking about Iron Maiden, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Like, it's, it's like, it's just... It's one of those things, man. And we're so grateful to work with Michael. He's such a cool guy and he's really close with the band. And we really look forward to, we've got a couple other ideas that we're going to do with him. Like, oh. so it's, yeah, before the band, we're trying to get a couple more things out before the band dies again, you know? So <laughs> I hope it doesn't yeah. die ever, but anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be real though. You know, I mean, The guys are at 63 years old. There's a global pandemic happening right now. We're not out there playing the, the Rolling Stones. It's still a high level of heavy music, you know? Yeah. So we want to be able to, to play and go out on top. So now is the time for us to do this stuff, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. it makes sense, yeah. And when it comes to Michael Whelan, uh, for me, it didn't go unnoticed that there's a song called Stormbringer on the new album, which is oh, also yeah. the name of the painting of the first album cover, Frost and Fire, also done yeah. by Michael, by the way. 
yes, that was inspired by that, by the book, by the Michael Moorcock book, Stormbringer. Oh, okay. Yep, which features the Michael Whalen's artwork. Yeah. Originally, you know, it was originally on a book. It's really cool that you're bringing like the early history of the band into this new release. Oh, like, it totally. The gap. We, yeah. Yeah, we mention it in some of the lyrics of the songs. See, we mention other song titles, and you know, like for example, in the song Frost and Fire, the. the the second line of the song is the frost monstream and the fire divine and on forever black track two and three are that the frost monstream is track two and track three is the fire divine so those oh songs are a pair of songs that go together yeah there's all kinds of weird stuff like that That's, all the hardcore fans will will appreciate it you know and the first single to come out of the album is legions arise which uh like i said it carries the band's dna on its sleeve what can you tell me about this one in particular man well, this is basically like the call to the army. Like, right. all right, like we're like the, the waking, the, the sleeping giant has awoken and we're calling upon the legions of followers, you know, to, to, to come out of the grave and join the tribe as we march forward into the apocalypse. And that's really happening. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And the, and the artwork and the songs on this album are all about post-apocalyptic utopian society. And that's where we're going. So it couldn't have been per more perfect. It was a premonition. Oh, you yeah. know, we didn't, wait 30, we didn't wait 30 years to do it. We didn't do it in 28 years. We did it in 29 years. We did it right now in 2020. This is it, man. So this is a, this is a, for a band that started in 1972, I would say if you ask me right this second and this minute today, they are a band of today, for today, for right now. They are indeed. Perfect timing, man. Perfect timing, yeah. And the other song already revealed is Before Tomorrow, which has a bit more of a mid-tempo and a great chorus, and perhaps unintentionally, very much in tune with our world today. Uh, the chorus oh my says, God. today we live in fear, today the end is near, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable, you know. I, I don't know what to say, man. I'm, I just... This is a time where a lot of people are afraid and uh, we're trying not to be afraid at all. We're just trying to be positive and look for all the benefits that are happening right now. Because there's a lot, this could be a good time. It's all about how you make it, you know? Oh yeah, it's all about perspective yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yep, yep. Speaking of mid-tempo, uh, you just mentioned the track, uh, The Frost Moon Stream, which also has that plotting metal riff. And what I found great about this one is that there's no commitment to the old formula of uh, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo. It goes in all directions, really. And it's, it's sort of like what you guys did in the past, really. There's no firm structure or anything, right? Yeah, I think that was like really, that, that was one of my challenges because I would always want to craft their song. Mm. You know, like when, they were, when I felt like they were too long and they didn't go anywhere. But sometimes you need just parts that just are random, you know, where yeah. you're like, Hey, let's just put that in there, even though it doesn't sound like it belongs there, and see what happens. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes yeah. it just makes it a little bit more interesting. You know, but that's cool. You know, I guess that's what you need to get people's attention these days, too. You know, like oh, you yeah. want to do something a little bit different. So, yeah, and Sarah Thungo is a weird enough band to be different. That's for sure. <laughs> I always read about this band even before I heard it, and the thing that right. was constant in every article is they are unconventional. So be ready to be impressed. And there I was. So I'm glad that you guys are back. It's funny because like, like, let's be honest, it's not Rush. Like it's, it's, it's got some progressive elements, but it's like, it's like the working man's or like the poor man's progressive elements, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, like when you listen to a lot of progressive rock, their musicianship is off the charts and the stories are so well put together and told. You know, yeah, and I think Sir Dungle is just like the bastard child of that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that that's but what it, metal is, cool. man. You know, you, you challenge that oh. notion, you challenge the the structures, and and you go forward. You know, you are what you are. So, yeah, exactly, yeah. and that's what exactly, and we've that's what we tried. I, I mean, that's really on this album. You know, after those guys hadn't been in the studio for decades, you know in your mind, you always hear it like much bigger and grander than it is. And at a certain point, that's what I, you know, had to kind of tell them like, look, it sounds like you guys, like, that's it. That's, we succeeded, you know? Yeah, sure. Like, yeah. And, and it's great. Yeah. So, so there's a track on the album called Fractus Promissum. What does that title yeah. mean? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it's Latin. I believe it's Latin. And it means, oh, broken promise. Oh, okay. Yeah. So 
fractus promethium, like a fractured promise, broken promise is what okay. it translates to. Kill the track. That's one of my favorites. Tim wrote the lyrics on that song. But yeah, I like how that song kicks in. It reminds me like you can play that song at like a sporting event to like pump people up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a runner, uh, so I like to run. And I, I just uh, ran a few miles yesterday listening to the album. Man, it's a great album to run to. Really? Okay, yeah. cool. Don't run too much, man. Watch those knees and those ankles, dude. I know, and I'm watching social distance as well, which is, it's hard to do, well, man. Well, at least you're already running, so you have momentum. If somebody comes close to you, you can just keep running the wrong, opposite direction. <laughs> That's right, yeah. So did, did you guys record the album with everyone in the room like old times or exchanging files here and there? No, it was pretty much like me and Jimmy mm. would play with Rob, and he would do the drum tracks that way. Okay. And then we overdub stuff, yeah. All right. And to this day, I'm still impressed at how Tim's vocals still hold up, even more so because he seems to do all those screams without even flinching. <laughs> I know it's a yeah. question more for him, but how would you explain that his voice is still so great? Well, I don't know because he, every time he walks in the room, he has a beer in his hand. <laughs> and Maybe that's the secret. He may be, and yeah. he doesn't warm up and he just does it. And then we record stuff and he'll give us like two or three takes like maximum mm -hmm. and that's it and i'm like he's like yeah just use what you can out of that and that's like that's all we get so i'm like <laughs> all right and to his defense like he can't repeat anything twice it's never going to be the same right. every time he sings it's going to be different and like he's just unique like that so i i can't i've never been able to explain it it just drives me crazy yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> No, I saw a few few live clips. Uh, there's one at the Rock Palace uh, from a few years ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought he was going to struggle, but no, he, he does it so well and so effortlessly. It's, uh, it's insane. Yeah. At his age? Oh, my I God. Know. Yeah. Yeah. And like jet lagged and like, you know, tired, whatever. He oh, yeah. It done. It's, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Like sometimes he'll say like, yeah, my throat's a little screwed up this week. And then he'll sing and I'll be like, what? Like. <laughs> okay dude you know yeah so all right and you've been in the band since the reunion shows of a few years ago right uh, right yeah what was the atmosphere of those first shows when the band got back together really stressful really how come yeah just man we had like there was so much pressure you know to perform and like i mean i was in denial even playing the first song you know live <laughs> like like i thought There's been many moments where I thought this thing was going to fall apart, like at shows, where it's like, this is the last, you know, <laughs> kind of stuff. Really, man, really. And just a lot of people came out of the woodwork that used to work with the band in their history, you know? And I had to kind of decide, like, you know, who was legitimate and who was not, you know? Okay. And a lot of people just wanted a lot of things. And there was just a lot of pressure, a lot. Okay. So it took a while for you guys to find your stride, right, I guess? <laughs> Yeah, but it's definitely there now. I feel great about it now. The album that you released last year, I'm Alive, killer, killer. So you guys are at the top of your game, mate. Thank you. And I read that uh, right after you guys reunited, the city of Ventura declared October 10 to be Siri Thungo Day. Correct, yeah. What was, what was that like? Uh, was there a ceremony type of thing? or how was Yeah, it, it was pretty cool. It was, yeah, there was. It was, it, was at a, it was at a city hall meeting, you know, that they did it. And we went the band went and a couple fans that stayed from the reunion show. because the reunion show was on the 7th of October. So it was that same week, you know? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. We got a proclamation from the city and it's cool. You know, Rob Garvin worked at works for the city for 38 years. Wow. So like, and he, you know, he, he struggled with his career and his job and he always wanted to be a, a professional, a famous drummer, you know, mm. he didn't want to work for the city. Uh, and so he resented it a lot and he had a lot of problems at his job. He's I just see. an interesting guy anyway. So, so he's like socially awkward enough that, you know, he, it wasn't an easy time for him working for the government for 38 years when you're like that, you know, I understand. So yeah, he wants to draw, he's a creative guy. You know, so it was good redemption for him. He basically, he retired on a Thursday, played his first show in 25 years on a saturday and got awarded by the city on a monday oh wow like, it, like the best weekend of all time for him oh, yeah I, i bet so uh, that's truly an honor i think and uh, for me another sign that there's a renewed interest in metal uh i don't know if you have the same perception but i feel that metal has a resilience these days that no other style has 
You know, it's so crazy that I, I try not to, I'm so involved in the scene, but I try not to project, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I just, cause I just don't know. Um, I'll, I'll continue to curate the scene as, as I'm sure you will too, mm-hmm. but you just kind of don't know where it's going until you're there. But um, it's sometimes some, Sometimes you feel like when you're doing stuff that these are important times. When you're putting out music that has something to do with the times, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want to date yourself, but when things happen that are unprecedented and you're a part of them and you live through them, they're valid. So, yeah. <laughs> and hey, and anyway, in metal, you're writing songs about ancient battles that nobody even knows about anyway, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Or fictitious battles, you know, stories. But, yeah. But no. Yeah. And uh, you had a few shows lined up for the release of the new album, including the headline spot on the Keep It True Festival, right, in Germany. Are there any news in terms of rescheduling dates or are you guys already discussing that? Or They're looking, I think, August 20th and 20th. 21st they're rescheduling keep it true and then courts of chaos in france will be the following weekend after that they're rescheduling we still have like baltimore and new york in june that those are still on those have not been canceled yet we'll see how that goes uh-huh. if they if they get canceled i won't be surprised rock the coast in spain has been canceled for june um night demon still has bang your head in july i don't know man So, like, we'll see. Um, we'll see. But hopefully uh, August things pick back up. We got a show in Mexico in September. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. No, we got some. Dude, we, look, we, the cool thing is we always book stuff way ahead of time. So whenever this thing comes back, we'll have something happening. You know? Sure. <laughs> But sure. right now, everything's on hold for everybody. You know? Right. Okay. And what's the plan for Night Demon? I mean, the last, last album I heard from you was Live Darkness in 2018, right? Yeah, we released a, we released a single. Oh, did you? And it's called Empire's Fall. We we released a seven inch single, and you could check that out when we get off this call. But, I will. Um, so that's our fir- the first music we've released in three years. Um, so that's cool. And we have we have more stuff we have more stuff happening this year that I, I'm not really talking about, but we'll roll it out time. But we've got a whole plan for 2020. It's been it's been great. Oh, good stuff. It wasn't in my radar for some reason, but I'll check it out for sure. Well, we didn't announce it, and we. Didn't tell anybody, you okay. know. So I'm sure you you will, you know. <laughs> right. I'll research yeah. that for sure. While we can tour, nobody can tour or anything. Are you planning any kind of podcast or live chat or a way to interact with the fans while touring is not possible? Yeah, um, I've been doing some Facebook Live events. I've been doing a, a segment called Ask Jarvis, where okay. people where people just ask me advice just about general things in life, you know, like relationships, finance. <laughs> cooking uh anything construction you know what well, anything like it's been fun it's been cool so but i have i have toyed with the idea of do, actually doing a real full-fledged podcast you know mm-hmm. and i i think i w- i'm gonna start doing that in 2021 but i want to line up some cool guests and like be able to do that and like it's much it sounds Sounds like it'd be harder to do that on the road, but I run into so many people on the road that I would want to interview that that's, I need to be able to tour to do that, you know? <laughs> so, I see. So it'll be hard to do that right now, you know? <laughs> yeah. So where can we check it out? Is it on Facebook, the uh, Ask Jarvis thing that you mentioned? It's just, I just do it on my personal page, but you can follow me on there. You know, you could go to like the Jarvis Leatherby personal Facebook page. I right. think I'm at the maximum amount of friends, but you can follow me on there. Sure, I'll do that. Yeah. Well, man, I hope this situation clears up soon and that you guys make it to Toronto where I'm located. Dude, I know. We were so, man, we were scheduled to be there in like a few days, you know? Yeah, I so, know. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> But anyway, I just wanted to wish you guys all the best with the new release. Uh, stay in touch and uh, I will be at the show as soon as it's rescheduled. Dude, thank you so much. Thanks. Take care, man. All right, man. Thanks. See ya. Thanks. Bye. Okay, everyone, thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this interview with Jarvis Leatherby of Siri Dungo. You can listen to it also on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcast, and iHeartRadio. Also, please follow us on Twitter and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to finish now with the song Legions Arise from Siri Dungo's new album, Forever Black. Forever Black.